The only way that we can determine whether a whole compound is polar or nonpolar is by taking a look at its Lewis structures. So Lewis structures are only written for only written for covalent compounds. And we call these molecules. Okay? So molecules is another name for covalent compounds. And it helps us to determine whether the compounds are polar or nonpolar by looking at the symmetry of the molecule. So what is a Lewis structure? It helps us to visualize what these molecules look like. Now remember, everything in chemistry is what? A model. So this is how we've modeled so that we can actually visualize what we cannot see with our own eyes. So, Lewis structures are a way to draw these compounds so you can see how they rearrange themselves in three-dimensional space. So how do we do that? Step one. First, you've got to determine the arrangement of the atoms. Step two, you determine the total number of valence electrons. Step three, you attach bonds um, to these atoms. And then you place remaining electrons around the peripheral atoms. What's peripheral? We'll see. All right. So first is determine the arrangement of the atoms. So there are two things that you do to help you determine the arrangement of the atoms. The central atom is always going to be either the least electronegative or the one that can make the most bonds. How do you know how many bonds an atom can make? Back to our trusty periodic table. So if you look at your periodic table, groups 1A through 3A can make the same number of bonds. Group 1A can make one bond, 2A can make two, 3A can make three bonds. Group 4 can make four bonds. Group 5 can also make three bonds. Group 6 can make two bonds, and group 7 can make one bond. All right? So, Mm, should I write that down somewhere? Uh, I won't. Make sure you look at your, read your textbook and take a look at your PowerPoint <laughs> to, uh, to verify that information. All right, so the least electronegative atom that we have here for this situation is hydrogen. However, for, for water is what I'm talking about. Hydrogen is the least electronegative, but it does not, it can only make one bond. It's found in group one, right? So we're going to put oxygen as the central atom because it can make more than one bond. It can make two bonds because it's in group six to say. All right, so let's arrange our atoms in space. All right. The next thing it says is to determine the number of electrons. Uh, that each atom shares. Now, valence electrons are only the outermost uh, energy level. Well, the valence electrons are determined by the group number. So whatever the group number is equals the number of valence electrons. Whatever your group number is. Okay? So hydrogen is going to give me 2 times 1 electron. And oxygen is going to give me 1 times 6 electrons for a total of 8 electrons. Now when we're drawing Lewis structures, a line represents a pair of electrons. So when we draw lines in between our central atom and our outside atoms, we've essentially used up four electrons. We've got four electrons remaining, and the idea is that you're going to fill up the outside atoms with an octet, make sure they have eight electrons, except for hydrogen, which can only have two, and any remaining electrons go to 
the central atom, and if we and if the central atom still doesn't have enough electrons, you can borrow some from the outside atoms. So if we take a look here, we've got four electrons to go. Hydrogen can only have two electrons, which is already uh, denoted by those lines in between it. So the remaining electrons have to go on oxygen. And the idea is that electrons always go in pairs, right? So I'll put two on the top of the oxygen, two on the bottom. Let's count up all of our electrons and make sure that we've placed them all. I've got two, four, six, eight. That Lewis structure is correct. Let's take a look at the bottom one, CHCl3. All right, well, remember our rules down here on the bottom. You're going to put our least electronegative atom or the atom that can form the most bonds. Well, out of all of these, carbon and hydrogen have the same electronegativity. But remember, hydrogen only can only do one bond, so it can't be a, a central atom. So hydrogens and halogens, anything in group 7A, are always on the outside. They're never central atoms. Never central. All right, so that means that our carbon is going to be in the middle, and we'll place all the other electrons around. Why am I using four sides? Well, if you think about it, electrons can only go in pairs. Each letter has four sides. So I'm going to, in a a bond must have two electrons. So each symbol has four sides to so its top, right, left, bottom. So I'm going to write those atoms around it. All right, now let's count up all the electrons that we have. Carbon is uh, one times four electrons because it's in group four. Hydrogen is one times two electrons because in group, um, I'm sorry, two, one electron because it's number one. And chlorine is three times seven electrons. So that gives me a total of 26 electrons that I have to place around this atom. So the rule is make bonds between the central atom and the terminal atom. So I'll, I'll write a, I will, write my lines in between each of these. Remember, each line represents two electrons. So I've already used up eight. That means I have to place 18 more electrons. Well, carbon is happy. It's already got eight electrons. So notice that the line means that each atom that the line is attached to, that atom shares those electrons. So carbon has four lines attached to it. That means it's sharing eight electrons, right? This carbon, this chlorine is sharing one, one of those pairs of electrons, but it's not happy. Notice that it has nothing else around it. So we have to make sure that all the atoms in the structure have an octet, okay? So let's now put our octet around the chlorines. Do we add them to the hydrogen? No. Because it's already happy, it's got two. So I just start randomly. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. So let's count and make sure. Let's count and make sure that we have all the right number. So that's Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, two, twenty-four, twenty-six. All right. When we were looking at polarity of bonds, it was about who, which atom was able to hold onto the bonds more, in in that um, which atom is able to hold onto the electrons more in that bond. Well, if we're looking at the polarity of the entire molecule. We need to see which side of the molecule do the atoms hang out more on? Which side of the molecule has more density of electrons? Well, if we take a look at CHCl3, 
Notice that there are no electrons up here by the hydrogen. But we've got numerous electrons surrounding these chlorine atoms. So what we can say is that this molecule is polar. Let's give it a different color. This molecule is polar in the downward direction. And what does this mean? I've drawn something called a dipole. And notice up here at the cross, this is the positive end, and the arrow is down at the negative end of the molecule. So this molecule is polar because we have this electron density around the carbon, I mean the chlorines. Let's take a look at water. I'll draw it again so it can be a little clearer for us to take a look at. Well, no, I can't erase that. All right, so I'll just draw it over again. Notice that there are no electrons hanging out around the hydrogens, right? But there are four electrons hanging out around the oxygen. So what can we say? We can say that, we can say that our dipoles from each bond go towards the oxygen. So what does that mean? That this molecule is polar going up towards the oxygen. So this is polar as well. All right? And it's mainly because the electrons are hanging out near the oxygen. So they're, that's the more positive side versus the hydrogen. I'm sorry, the oxygen is the more negative side, whereas the hydrogens are the more positive side. So remember, the cross is the positive and the point is the negative end.